So we're going to be going through the 2019 complex numbers test, which was really tricky. We had some really tricky exam questions. Much, much harder than last year's test. Much harder. Okay. The reason why I did that is because a lot of questions in the exam are fairly easy for complex numbers, but there are some really tricky exam two questions in history. Their students actually perform the Form the worst on that question. So, first of all, this says here the number of distinct roots. Can I get you to highlight the word distinct? Because it's really important we understand what distinct means. There's a bit of a misconception with distinct, distinct roots because the fundamental theorem of algebra says that a polynomial, a polynomial of degree six has how many roots? Degree six has how many roots? Six? Yes, six roots. However, there can be repeated roots. Now, what I mean by that, for example, if I had something like this, x minus four squared is equal to zero, that's a polynomial of degree two. How many how many solutions does it have? It has one solution, doesn't it? So that's where it can be a little bit tricky. So whenever you have this, and you'll only ever have this question, in an exam two where you can use your CAS calculator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my CAS calculator and I really have to, the only way I can do this is if I can solve this in the CAS calculator, then I can then see how many distinct roots I have. So what's my shortcut for solve? Menu three, one, and then I'm, I would just stick a C out the front. Okay, C solve. And what we're going to do with C solve is we then need to put in our equation. And rather than solving with respect to X, of course, the calculator knows that as Z. So in this question, we've got Z to the power of 4. So Z, Z to the power of 4, Z to the power of 4, minus 1. And let's open up the brackets. We're going to have open up brackets here. And we've got z squared. Uh, now, plus 3iz. So plus 3. We Now, don't put type i because if you type i, it's not going to work. You need to go to the pi button and you need to go use this i. Okay, and then z. You probably should do times z because sometimes it might recognise... When in the calculator, if you don't multiply, if you multiply these things, sometimes it might recognise i z as a variable. So it's a good habit to do that. Um, it'll probably work out nonetheless, but like so is equal to zero. Now, what am I forgetting? Comma z. Okay, how many distinct roots do we have? Let's count them. Five roots. Repeated root, do we care which one it is? No, because we just need to answer the question. So the, the answer to that question is there is five distinct roots, okay? One of those is a repeated root, all right? You're probably fine it might be. If we go back to the CAS calculator, um, we've got two. Can you see here we've got, uh, we've got a real and a real, two reals, and we've got two imaginaries. They don't come in complex pairs, though, do or conjugate pairs, do they? Why wouldn't they come in conjugate pairs? Because the because the coefficients are not all real. Yes, that's right. Okay, good. Now, whenever you're doing this one, so answer to that is D. With this next one on an argon diagram, we don't need a CAS calculator for this. You'd be wasting your time. What I'm going to suggest over here, though, is this is a circle, okay, I've got, because the distance from this point is two. So, so and, and we looked at locus of points last year. So, this is a circle, centre two and two, okay, two and two i. So, this is my real of z, and this is the imaginary of z, and that is a circle at centre two and two. And it is of radius 2. So it's going to look something like this, isn't it? It's a really ugly looking circle. Now, what can you tell me then? Where do they, it says here, the maximum possible or integers. Now, argz of equals theta. 
So they intersect. So if they intersect, doesn't it start here? Here's my argument of Z, and it can go anywhere. But where's the, where's the point where they can intersect? They can intersect if I go this way. What's that angle? That angle is zero. What's this angle over here if I go all the way around here? That angle is pi on two. So can you see that it's asking for the maximum possible interval of, of, of theta where it intersects? Yes, it can intersect anywhere, but the it says here the interval, the highest interval is from zero to pi on two. So therefore, and is it inclusive of zero? Yes, it's also inclusive of pi on two, so we need to, therefore, the answer must be D. Is that right? Yep. Okay. No need for a CAS calculator. You've got to understand or decide when to use the CAS, when not to use the CAS. Yes, you can sketch that in your CAS, but you're wasting your time, okay? You could quite comfortably do that question in a minute. Now, let's have a look over here. I would not be using my CAS at all for this one. But what I'm going to say is Z to the end. Whenever you're dealing with this, we're going to change that 1 plus I. We're going to change it to polar form. It has a modulus of root 2 and an angle. If you don't know what the angle is, if you're getting it wrong consistently, you need to go 1 plus i is there. What's that angle? Well, we know what that angle is. It's pi on 4. It's root 2 sits of pi on 4. Now, technically, what happens is I have infinite amount of solutions if I add 2k pi, where k is some integer, negative, positive, doesn't matter go around to uh, 8 pi or we could go we could subtract 12 pi it doesn't matter but what happens though is we're trying to find so z to the power of n we want to find the solution we want to find what z is so in other in order to find z we need to do all of that to the power of n root 2 cis of pi on 4 plus 2k pi to the power of 1 over n in order to get that. Now, what I'll, so what that is, is now just quickly, root 2 is 2 to the power of a half, isn't it? So that's, uh, that's the trick there. So 2 to the power of a half. So I won't have an equal sign here. So 2 to the power of a half to the power of 1 over n is equal to 2 to the power of 1 over 2n. So whenever you have over there, well, first of all, let's, before we guess anything, let's get rid of that one there, okay, and we can get rid of this one there, and we know even if we're guessing, we know it's A, C, or E. Now, when I apply De Moivre's theorem, um, we're going to have 1 over N, so that's, so the angle is going to be pi over 4N plus 2K pi over N, and that's going to be my angle. Now, of course, I'm not showing all the working, I don't need to. But as you can see there, which one of these, 2k pi over n, the answer is, well, it's not uh, pi over, that doesn't have an n in it, so it can't be c, and therefore it must be e. Yeah? Panaco, is there? Well, a, you've got 2k pi on n, uh, pi on 4n, it's saying it says K is an element of R. So 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 what we're looking for is it's not real numbers. Yeah, we so it's so so we're looking at Z here. Okay, complex. Uh, oh sorry, K is sorry, Z is integers, isn't it? So it's not real numbers, it's integers. So that's the trick. That's the trick to that one. Okay, now let's keep going with this. First of all, what do we indicate? What is We need to be able to recognise what this is. Do not waste your time on a calculator. What this is is it states that we've got two points and we're going to mark those out on an argand diagram. What does this have to be for this to be zero? That's two minus i. Okay, so we've got sort of the point two and negative one. So two, let's say that here, negative one is that here. Here's my point here. And then this point here is my real of z is equal to four. So we've got sort of something like four zero. So that's going to be sort of somewhere out here. Now what it is, is if I join those points together, 
Okay, if I join those points together, we're looking for the line which is a perpendicular bisector of those two points. Okay, it's going to look something like this, isn't it? That's what it's going to look like. So this case here, when you see these things, it's the perpendicular bisector. Now, I reckon just through inspection, you can probably see that a, which one of these points would lie on that graph. Well, first of all, if I look at negative 3, would negative 3 really lie on, if negative 3, certainly not going to, it's going away and up and up and up. So automatically, I, without even looking, I could cross those out there by, just by visualising the problem. Now, if I get 3 and a half, so we know that somewhere between 2 and, and, and that, 3 and a half to me, it looks like it's going to be a negative value. So I'm just, without even doing that, I'm going to cross that out. Now it's now an option between this one and this one. So how do we go ahead and, and do that? What can we do? Couldn't we sub those points in and work out what it is? Yeah? And then which, which one is true? Okay, so why don't we substitute? Why don't we substitute, um, substitute uh, A, which is the real part, real part of Z is equal to 3, and the imaginary part of Z is equal to minus a half. So if I let's let's do that. We're going to have uh, Z. So so that's three three. Uh, what is it? Three minus two, and then we've got plus i, and then minus a half. Is that equal to? Uh, we've got the real part is 3, so 3 minus 4 is minus 1 and minus a half i. Now the question is, are these the same? Well, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 minus a half, 1 minus a half is a half, a half plus i. Is, is, is that modulus the same as this? Is that are those two the same? Is the distance of those two the same? Yes, it is. So therefore, the answer must be A. Okay, so if I was to sub this point in here, you're not going to get the same modulus on each side. So we've basically ruled out three options, and then we've, and really by using a calculator, even if you could and you can, you're actually wasting a fair bit of time with that. So a very tricky question. Uh, now, just one sec, Edith, you had a question, so I'm going to pause this. Uh, <clears throat> now, for this question here, first of all, whenever you're doing these things, convert to polar, do you need to do it in the calculator? I do not think so. So, first of all, this is going to be two cis straight away. What's going to be my angle? What's going to be my angle? If what's inverse tan of root three, pi on three, and what quadrant is it in? What quadrant? So it's in the fourth quadrant. So the, the reference angle is going to be minus theta, minus pi on three. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do that to the power of 12. Okay. So what we're going to do is, now that's going to, have, look, two to the power of 12, that's fine. But if I was to do that 12, that's minus four pi and then you, you're going to have multiple things. Now, let's think about it. What's the equivalent of cis of minus 4 pi? That's 2 to the 12 cis of 0, isn't it? Now, the question is, is the argument of Z2 less than 0? No, it's equal to 0. If I add the imaginary and the real, well, the real part, the real part is 2 cis of 0, that means that real Z is definitely, it's going to be, um, uh, it's it's equal to 2 to the power of 12, isn't it? So so if I, it's certainly not less than 0 because the imaginary part's 0. Okay, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at somewhere over here. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. That's 2 to the power of 12. Is the magnitude of Z2 less than 0? 
well, how can the magnitude be less than zero? And with is the real part equal to zero? Is the real part equal to zero? No, the real part clearly is not equal to zero because this here is the real. Okay, so therefore it's actually the imaginary part is, is zero. And you could you could represent that on an Argand diagram and circle it away. Now, just quickly, um, the set of points can be described. This one can be a little bit uh, tricky here. So, um, but what we have is, let's, this is once again a perpendicular bisector. Now, now the whole point A here though, we've got A minus A would give me zero. And let's just say that A is it say it's positive, it's reals except for zero. Let's just, I just want to get an idea of what it looks like. If A was there, then minus AI would be, if A was positive, then minus AI would be sort of somewhere down here, wouldn't it? Now, if I had the real part, um, so what we've got is we've got Z is Z minus A. So if I had A there and minus AI there, then what we're going to have is it would be a perpendicular bisector again, which means it would be something, some point going across here, and, and this would be the line. So there is the real of Z plus the imaginary of Z equal to zero? Mm, I don't think so, um, because we've got, you can see there that we're not, we're not going, it's certainly not going to be the case. The, the trick with this one is, is that when I have my perpendicular bisect, you notice here this distance here is A, and this distance here is also A. So what's this angle going to be? This angle's going to be pi on 4. So therefore, we're going to have now, there's an open circle there, isn't there? So there's an open circle. So we're going to have... This angle in here is, is negative pi on 4, and over here, this angle in here is going to be 3 pi on 4, but you'll never ever get an angle of, of you'll never, there's never an angle here to 0, so the angle's either going to be negative pi on 4 or 3 pi on 4, and you, you really have to work your way through these. If, you get, if you're feeling lucky, you could start with this one, but you really have to work your way. These are qu questions are a little bit tricky, okay? I reckon the hardest part of this test probably was a couple of extended response and definitely the multiple choice. Multiple choice is very tough, okay? There was not an easy multiple choice question in all of these. Now, just quickly going into here, just one sec. Now, I saw a lot of students with this one do a lot of things in the answer is in Cartesian form, but that does not mean you shouldn't work in polar form, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work in conversion polar form. What I want you to do is this. Z cubed is equal to 8 fifths of pi on 2, okay? Deal with that first. So therefore, Z is equal to, when I'm doing that, it's going to be uh, 2 to the power of 3, so that's Two this of pi on two. I guess that's times by we're doing it times by a third, which is one three plus two k pi on three. That's going to give you all of the solutions when doing that. Now, such that k is an element of z, such as integers, which is equal to two this of pi on six plus two k pi on three. So therefore, we can say that, now, which one of these values falls in this range that we're looking at? We, we know that whenever we do a problem, we need to have argz between negative pi and, uh, sorry, pi and negative pi, inclusive. So what, uh, if, if, if k is zero, we've got two cis of pi on six. We've also got um, two cis of, um, pi on 6 minus 4 pi on 6 is minus 3 pi on 6, which is what pi, negative, is negative pi on 2. And, then, and if we add, if we subtract it again, that's not going to be any good. 
But if we add 4 pi on 6, that's going to be 2 cis of 5 pi on 6. But the question is asking for in Cartesian forms. If I would have only got one mark, maybe two, but most likely you need all of these in Cartesian form to get those final two marks. So therefore, we can say that Z is equal to now 2 cis of pi on 6. Cos of pi on 6 is root 3 on 2. Root 3, root 3 plus i, yes, in the first quadrant. And we've also got, now, the just be careful, though. A lot of students think that there's going to be, like, conjugate pairs. Are, the, are all of the uh, coefficients in this real? Are all the coefficients real? We've got an we've got an imaginary number there, don't we? So they don't necessarily come in conjugate uh, com, com, conjugate pairs. So what we've got is we've got um, we've got root three. Is it root three minus i? The other one, and is that right? Oh, minus root three. What is it? Minus root three plus i. So they're not conjugate pairs, are they? Okay, they're not conjugate pairs because look, this is complex. This is complex, so therefore it's not going to come in conjugate pairs. And the other one, two cis of a five pi on six. Well, that's we've just done that. So this this guy here is what minus two i. Okay, there you go. There's our three marks. Now it says here if these if this is equal to zero, then what we can do is couldn't we just add two i? Could we add 2i to both sides? So find the solutions to the solutions now. It's just one mark. So what we're doing is to, to, to move that, um, we are doing a translation of plus 2i to each of those. So therefore what we can say is z is equal to root 3 plus 2i is root 3 plus 3i. And then we can do minus root 3 plus 3i, and we're adding 2i to, to minus 2i, which is 0. Just write the answer. No need for any working, because it's only one mark. Now, this one was from exam 1, by the way, so you wouldn't, you, there's no calculator. The problem is with this test is I think some of you didn't really recognise when you can use the calculator, and I think we'll need to split it up next time. This question here was from taken from an exam two. You're never going to get a question worth two marks in exam one. But a lot of these things can be done using a calculator if you are unsure. Now, first of all, how would I do this in a calculator? Two minus two root three i. I don't expect, I wouldn't expect you, I wouldn't want you to do it in a case calculator, but let's do it anyway, just to show you. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have minus Two minus two uh, root three, and then we're going to be careful. Let's make sure the i goes outside of the um, thing. There, what we want to do is we want to go menu uh, number complex number tools, and we want to convert to polar. Now, you could have done that. Like so. Now, what's that? 4 cis of minus 20. This is because this is in degree mode, okay? I had that for my year 10s, okay? But, of course, you guys, if I was to change this document settings, I should never have it in degree mode. I I did for the year 10, so I'm going to make that default. And let's try um, that again. Um, let's go to over to here. So let's try this again. There you go. That's how your calculator will go. 4 cis of minus 2 pi on 3, isn't it? Can you see that? E to the i pi is cis pi. So that's cis. Now, you never write that in an exam. You, this is only how the calculator recognises it. But you can see there, I think that's a bit of a waste of time personally because what we're going to do is we're going to call uh, we're going to call z is e to R cis theta. So we want to find what R is. That's the magnitude of minus.
minus 2 squared plus minus 2 root 3 squared, which of course is 4. And finally, um, tan theta is equal to my imaginary component over my real component, which is equal to root 3. So what we have is my ref, this is, this is my reference angle. So my reference angle is theta is equal to, what's that going to be? Pi on 3. So therefore, my reference angle, though, is in which quadrant? We're in, we're in the, the, which quadrant is this? The third quadrant. Now, unfortunately, in complex numbers, especially in the specialist maths course, you, once you get to there, you have to stop. So we've got to go this way. So my reference angle is, is going to be like this. This, is, this angle in here is minus 2 pi on 3, isn't it? So that, therefore, the answer is 4 cis of minus 2 pi on 3. And that's all you needed to do for the mark. You didn't really need to show any working there. You went straight to the answer. That's great. Now, can I just show you this? If you got this wrong in your test, it's because you did what we call reverse engineering. We need to show this is this. The roots of this is this. If you use the answer to prove backwards, you get zero marks. That is quite clear in the VCAR instructions when you go through exams. Whether you were told that or not, but of course you've got to understand that um, the IB program and the VCE program are completely different. What I will say is students that use the answer, you need to pretend that this answer doesn't exist, okay, whenever you're showing that. So what we're going to do, the easiest way I thought, is completing the square or using the quadratic equation. I prefer to complete the square. So I'm going to halve that 4 and we're going to square both sides. And then we're going to have, we're going to subtract 4, 2 squared. And then we've got plus 16 as we put it in the row. That's the first step. Now, what we're going to have is that's going to be z plus 2 squared is um, plus 12 is equal to 0. Now, usually you would stop. In methods, you would stop. There's no solutions. However, we've got, we've got the difference of perfect squares in methods and specialists, but in specialists, we have the sum of perfect squares because I can convert that to minus 12i squared is equal to 0, 12z plus 2 squared, and of course, if I wanted to, now that I've just turned salts into dots, okay, so the difference of two squares, therefore I can say that z plus 2, uh, now I'm going to, it's the square root of 12, which is four, 2 root 3, so it's minus 2 root 3i, and z plus 2 plus 2 root 3i, and that is equal to 0. Okay, now therefore, what we have now is therefore we can say that the roots are roots are z is equal to uh, minus two plus or minus two root three i as required. It's a fair bit of work to do, but just the one is it one mark you're given for that? Not much because you've been given the answer. But the reason why is they want you to they want you to use those roots in the next question. So now I can now I can rub that out. And yes, we need those roots. That's why they give it to you in the in the exam. If you are asked to show that, it's generally because you need it somewhere else. They don't have many consequential marks. So what we're going to do is um, it's then asking us to express those. Roots in terms of this. Now, now what we have is we have minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 3i. Now, what I'm going to call, I'm going to call this, I'm going to really need to set the scene here. I'm going to let z1, I'm going to let z1 equal 2 minus 2 root 3i. So I've defined exactly what I'm doing. This is where some of you would have lost the marks. Now, if I want to get minus 2, uh, plus 2 root 3i, can you see there that therefore 
and we can say that um, the roots are, I can literally multiply uh, Z1 by minus 1, and that's going to be one of those ones. Can you see there that minus 1 times 2 minus 2 root 3i is minus 2 plus, that's going to be one of those roots, minus 2 plus 2 root 3i, is equal to is equal to minus z1. Okay, so that's one of the roots. Now, in order to get both the answer, you needed to state both of them, which is a little bit harsh. But what? Let's have a look at uh, conjugate of z1. What's the conjugate of z1? Conjugate of z1. The real stays the same. The imaginary is changed like so. Now. What is minus Z, Z1 bar? That's going to be uh, minus 2, minus 2 root 3i, which is the other root of this guy. So therefore, you needed to state that the roots are, these are our roots here. I've defined, and first of all, I've defined what Z1 is. And then and quite a few of you did this sort of thing. You sort of did minus 2 root 3i, and, and you sort of did, uh, that minus, that's also acceptable as well, isn't it? Okay, so so that's how I did it personally, but you would might might look a little bit different when, when you did it. Now this one, this is a really stock standard question. Whenever you get these and you've got to show that, I think you should always start with z is equal to x plus y i, like so. And then we're substituting that in to our equation. Got x plus y i on the left hand side, and on the right hand side, I've got x plus y i minus 2, uh, now plus 4 root 3 i when I expand that out, like so. Now I'm going to collect the real and the imaginary parts before I do that, so the left hand side stays the same. I'm, you don't have to do it as many steps, but I'm going to collect the x minus 2. I'm going to That's plus 4 root 3, isn't it? Like so. So now, when I'm when I'm doing the magnitude of those, all right, we corrected our mistake. So that's just me going too fast. If you guys go too fast, the same thing will happen. If you know what you're doing, though, you won't run out of time in your actual exam in November. You'll have some time left. So I've just corrected that mistake there. Thank you for raising that, Edith. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just go straight to, now there's a square root of both sides, so we don't need to do that. So let's go, therefore, x squared plus y squared is equal to x minus 2 all squared plus y plus 2 root 3 all squared, like so. Expand it out. Ooh, I don't know what happened there. x squared plus y squared is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus y squared. Plus 4 root 3y plus 12. Okay, now the, the y squares and the x squares cancel, and what I'm left with is I'm left with minus 0 is equal to minus 4x uh, plus 4 root 3y plus 16. See, I haven't skipped any steps here. You can skip maybe the odd step, but you can't skip these key steps. If you go straight from there to the answer, it hasn't been shown. You'll get one mark out of two. What a shame. It would be a real shame if you did that. So please, we now I want you to take out four uh, as a common factor, or minus four, and we've got x uh, minus uh, root three y, and we've got minus four is equal to zero, so therefore, uh, x, um, sorry, let's start like so, and therefore x minus root 3, y minus 4 is equal to 0 as required. Now about 60% of students got that full marks when they did that in the actual exam. I would hope that 100% of our students are getting that right, because if you if you don't skip steps, if you answer the question, you've been given the answer. 
So if you skip too many steps, you will not get the answer. Now, it's then asking us to win out to sketch this line. Now, I still haven't used the calculator at any of this stage, but by the way, this is a CAS calculator question, so you've got to use it to your aid. You couldn't use it for that one because it will show that question. Now, I'm saying that we're plotting the roots from the four. Okay, so those roots from the four, was, I think it was minus two plus root two root three i. But just note, though, that those roots had a modulus of four, didn't they? Okay, if you have that, if you have a modulus of four, then it needs to be on this circle here. And as you can see, they are uh, coming conjugate pairs, or they, they are conjugates. Why are they conjugates coming conjugate pairs? Let's have a look at the coefficients. The coefficients are 1, 4, and 16. Are they real? Therefore, there's the roots must come in conjugate pairs. Okay? So, so, so therefore, we've labelled our roots. Now, that gives you one mark by just putting a circle there and putting a circle there. And I can, uh, I can, lab I can even label them minus 2, minus uh, 2 root 3i and minus plus 2 root 3i. I think it's a good idea to label them what they are. If they call it Z1 and Z2, please do use the same notation. But then the last step is we actually had um, the, uh, the line. Now that line is, I think, you go through here. You use a CAS calculator, but from memory, it goes through here and it actually goes through this point here. So what we wanted to see is when you sketch that in the CAS, that line would go through there, like so. No need to identify what that is, but if you sketch the line, that will give you the mark, and those two points in the correct spot will also give you the mark. I saw a lot of students have the points sort of over here and over here, and of course you're not going to get the mark for that. It's quite black or white. Now, this question here. This question here, can I just uh, can I just pause this video whilst I go and find go and find it? As you can see, I have pinched this question from the 2017 exam, and let's see see how students did for this one. First of all, 26% of students didn't get the first mark. Why? Probably because they were saying four cis of four pi on three. A number of incorrect answers had arguments outside the third quadrant, which should have altered students. And basically, if you drew a diagram and you stayed within the negative pi to pi, you would have got that answer. Um, this case, they're showing you the quadratic equation, but look at that. Only 55% of students got that one mark because they didn't correctly show. Correct solutions are obtained by using the quadratic or completing the square. Some students did not correct, uh, correctly follow the show that instruction, either by not showing key steps in their solution or by solely verifying the solutions given by substitution. So substitution resulted in no marks. Okay, so uh, I think it's made quite clear that those students that substituted got zero marks. Over here, look, that is fine, but I did it a different way. I let Z1 is equal to something, and I said that that's minus Z1 and minus Z1 bar. But that would have been perfectly acceptable. Look at the answer, though. 69% of students got zero marks for this. So, so as you can see, this is not an easy question. This one was supposed to be the easiest, the show that question. But look, only 65% of students got that mark, those two marks. Now, look at that one. Only 53% of students could draw two dots correctly in the right place and draw a line which went through this, uh, this uh, root here and went through the, the, uh, the 0 0.40. So I, I think that, in all honesty, that question, if you were to have that in the exam this year, you should absolutely nail that nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100. But look at this. Oh! Oh, my God, that is terrible. This is the most, the hardest question. This is the hardest question I've ever seen on an exam. I've never seen another question where 99% of students got zero. And 
And 1% of students, it was actually less than 1%, it was more like half a percent. So one in 200 students got that right and 199 out of 200 students got that wrong. Can I just make this suggestion? Girls and guys in here, there are going to be questions on the exam, no matter how much you prepare for it. There will be questions where you will just not be able to do it. Okay, now that's not for me to say that you can't do this question. But what I will say is, in the maybe the two or three minutes that I'm going to spend on it, I think that maybe this is a conversation for another time and this is a question that, well, in this exam, no one got it, okay? I'll try my best to give you some, some form of reasoning with it, but at the end of the day, I do think that this one is might, might be one we leave for another time, okay? Let's go through and, and go through this, this question. Why have I got? I'm trying to, let's just, uh, let's, let's try to go down here. Where it says here, Z minus A, Z minus B is equal to, um, it means they're equal to. And it says here, the equation of the line which passes through the roots. So the line that passes through the two roots is this vertical line. Would you agree? Oops. This line here. Now, what that means is that's a perpendicular bisector of the two points A and B, such that A, it says here that A and B can be complex. So it means that if A and B were here, for example, now let's say if A and B here, can you see there that that's the perpendicular bisector? That's supposed to go through there. There's a perpendicular bisector. Can you see there that, that those distances are the same? What about if I had it over here and over here? Can you see there that those that distance is the same? That distance is the same. All right, so what they're trying to find is they're trying to find the example for where, for or all the examples for B in terms of A. Now, I'm going to refer to the iTunes solution for this. This is another good resource that I think you can use um, because there's two different methods for this and I could explain it all day and you still not understand it. But what I am going to suggest is that you go back and watch this video, take a good look, have a good think about it and, and then see how you go. So um, I would do it in a series of transformations, basically. We're going to get that line why uh, real z is equal to minus 2, we're going to bring it across 2, and we're going to basically do quite a few things. A and B, if I multiply by the con if I have the conjugate, they're going to be sort of opposite sides. But if I multiply by minus the conjugate, then I'm going to get it on the other side. It's actually a really tricky question to even explain, let alone understand. Now, iChute.com has a lot of written solutions to each of your VCE exams. Let's have a look at what they did. Specialist Mass Exam 2 Solutions. Let's open that up, okay, and we're going to go through and look at question, what was it, 3, 4, F. Okay. Now it says here that B can be obtained by applying the following sequence of transformations to A. Remember that B is on the other side of A, isn't it? Okay, so we're looking up. We're looking up here for four f. So, if I turn a into uh, the conjugate of a, that's going to get it on the other side. But, but that's the same as. Um, but then, if I multiply it by i squared, that's a, a, a. It's going to be a rotation of 180 degrees, and then I subtract four. Now that's going to give me b. So so so. In other words, let's have a look at these these things here. Let's, let's this is not easy. This is really tricky. Okay, and I really think that this is quite a, a very difficult question to to try and comprehend, especially in such a short amount of time. Let's just say that here and here, and let's just say that for argument's sake, if B was here and A was here, okay, as you can see, if I if Sorry, that's A. First of all, 
what I can do is let's get A and I'm going to do the conjugate of A. Now, the conjugate of A is going to be down here, isn't it, somewhere? Let's just say down here, and that's the conjugate of A, okay? Now, if I then get A, I then want to do a transformation. Now, at the moment, at the moment, this is sort of a two, but I'm going to move it across two, and in... And, and, Basically, I want to get this sort of over to here, and then I want to get it back up to there. It's a series of transformations which gets it to there, and that's what that's what this whole process is. The, the answer being minus 4 minus a bar. Alternatively, they've used another solution here. When you add the real part of the imaginary, sorry, when you add the real parts of b and divide it by 2, then that's going to be equaling minus 2. And if you add the imaginary parts, then, um, or in actual fact, as you can see, the imaginary part of B and A are the same, aren't they? Because they're, they're the same height. So this way is probably a little bit, I think, easier to understand in my opinion. I've got it on the video. I'm going to leave it on there. I'm going to give you some time to sink it in and see if you can do it. Like I said, You've seen that this is probably the hardest exam question in the history of specialist math, so I do think it needs a little bit more time for you to process and think through, and then we can go through, discuss with myself or Mr. Holden, all right? So I'm going to leave that there for the time being. Now, just quickly, where does this, uh, for this part, they then ask you for the area. Find the area of the major segment bounded by the line passed through the roots, this and this. So... The major segment, we, once again, it's a bit of an out there question. You probably wouldn't have expected it, but let's go back and have a go. So when I have my two roots, now my two roots, I've made a real big mess here, haven't I? So let's go ahead and sketch those two roots. So those two roots are here, and those two roots are here and here. Now, when I sketch this circle, and forgive me because I'm doing a really poor job of this, okay, so this I'm sketching this circle. So what we're saying is they want to find the area bounded by the line passing through the roots and the, and the major arc, which is 4. So they want to find this they want to find the area. Now, what I'm going to do is the minor segment is, is the part of the circle which has the least area. They want to find this area here. Now, can I suggest, can I suggest this? In specialist mass, because, because anything we do in 11 specialists is prerequisite, means that anything like your circular theorems and your chord theorem, all of these need to go in your, in your bound reference. Now, what we're going to do is how do we find the area of a major segment? Now, I'm going to show you ducks of the school in 2000, area of a, a segment, a major segment. Now, this needs to be in your bound reference, okay? So... Um, let's go and show you, let's go and show you where, well, let's open this up and let's show you uh, specialist mass and we're looking at bound reference from Sarah Webster, Ducks of the School. And she has got all sorts of things, including, let's have a look, where are we at? Aha, uh -huh, arithmetic, she's even got all of this stuff in here. Let's get, let's see if we can find it. Aha, chords. Keep going. Aha, major segment and minor segment. Mm. All right, so which, so the area of a segment, major segment. I reckon we're using that one, aren't we? Half R squared theta minus sine theta. Maybe. Which one are we using? 
to find the area of a major segment. Might pause this for a second. Let's resume there quickly. So, so that's pi times four squared times two thirds. That's the area. So we've so what we've done is we've worked out um, two thirds of the area of the circle. Okay, so that's two thirds of the area of the circle. And then what we're doing is we're then adding that triangle. Okay, so the area of the triangle was 4 root 3. So you could have broken it up. Me, myself, I would have to revise that sort of stuff because at the top of my head, I wouldn't know without a band reference either. Okay, I, you, you forget these things. So that's 16. So, that's, so the answer is 32 pi over 3 plus 4 root 3 in exact values. Right, let's see if I can finish this off as best I can. And also, we can just remember this question, 13 marks, it's exam two, which means you can use a CAS calculator. Now, I'm going to very quickly do this. The magnitude of this is 4 root 2. This is the easiest question you're ever going to get. We can say that the magnitude of um, uh, 4 minus 4i is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus minus 4 squared which is the square root of 32, which is equal to 4 root 2 as required. Now, you're going to need that for later. That's why you've been asked to show them. And the argz of uh, is minus 1, 4. A lot of students, all you have to do for this is that tan theta is equal to minus 4 over 4. So therefore, theta is equal to inverse tan of negative 1, which is equal to minus pi on 4. That's really all you had to show for that. Most students got that one, though. Now, over here, you could use a CAS calculator. But at the same time, I don't think it was really that necessary. We've got z to the power of 5 is equal to w. And W, though, is equal to 4 minus 4i. And we just found that that was equal to 4 root 2 cis of minus pi on 4. Now, before you do that, let's add 2k pi to the, to the um, problem because we can therefore say that z to the power of 5 is equal to that. So therefore, z, to, z is equal to, now 4 root 2 is equal to 4 root 2 to the power of 1 fifth cis of multiplying that as minus pi on 20 plus 2k uh, pi on 5. Now what we want to do such that k is any integer. So what we can do is we're going to sub that in. Now, if I do uh, 4 root 2 to the power of 1 fifth, that gives me root 2. Okay, in the calculator, that's fine. Root 2. So z is equal to root 2 cis. Now, there's going to be how many solutions? Five, and they're going to be equally spaced. And from memory, if we've got, we're going to have if k is equal to 0, that's going to be one solution. The other one is going to be root 2 cis of, we're going to add 2k pi of 2 pi on 5, which is uh, 8, which is 7 pi on 20. In actual fact, if they're going to be separated by 5, then that means they're going to be for 2 pi, which is uh, 10 pi on 5. So we're then literally just going to separate those out over the circle. So isn't there going to be, there's going to be a root 2 cis of 19 pi on 20? And the other one's what, root 2 cis of, what was it, what were the other ones we had? Uh, was it 3 pi on 4? And the last one is, so look, here's your method mark here. There definitely needs to be some method mark. You need to show some method mark. 
And then really you're probably going to get your answer, your, your last two answer marks from here. And the other one was root 2 cis of negative 17 pi over 20, like so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of those stated for your mark. Now it then says on the diagram, look, just be careful. You have a bit that has calculated. Root 2, root 2 is approximately equal to 1.4, 1.42 or something like that. So 1.41 or something like that. Make sure this is 1.5. So you can't, if you're drawing a line around here, it's no good. It's got to be fairly close to that line. Okay, so we're going to we're going to do sort of around here, around here somewhere, and if you're drawing a circle around, like so. If it was two, if it was either side of this line, if it was over here, you're not going to be getting the mark. If it was really close to here, you're not going to be getting the mark. So, so a lot of students lost the mark for that. And the last one is we're plotting out those two points now from memory. Over those two points, you've got to remember that the modulus is root 2, so it had to be on that circle. There's one there, and I believe 1, 2, 3, there was a one there, and I think 1, 2, 3, 4, was it something like that? And there was another one over, over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the other one was somewhere over here, I think. All right, you guys, that one was... Not too bad, but a lot of students lost marks for that. All right, we're going to finish up. We're going to finish up with this. I'm going to do this as quickly as possible because I know you guys are going to get going. And first of all, let's convert to polar, please. All right? Whenever you're dealing with this, let's convert to polar. This isn't as bad as, as, as you thought because it says here that we're looking at positive real numbers. So if I convert that to polar, first of all, u is equal this, what quadrant am I in? I'm in the last quadrant. So that's going to be 2 cis of what? Minus, minus pi on 6. Okay? Now if I say, if I say u is also equal to 2 cis of minus pi on 6 plus 2k pi, like so. Now, what we're going to have is we want the, the, the least positive integer, of k, for which u to the power of k is equal to this. So really what we're going to do is we're going to divide, um, in order for this to be, so what we need to do now is we need to find a real number. Okay, so what we're going to do is if I go ahead and use De Moivre's theorem, we can say that, u to the power of k is equal to 2 to the power of k, and we're going to multiply that all by, by k. Okay, so that's going to be, now just quickly, this thing, um, so 2 to the power of k minus pi on 6k, if you like, and the thing is, is that this thing in here, it needs to be real. So how can we make that real? How can this be real? Well, for starters, whenever I have that, the only time I'm going to get real and it's positive is if the angle is what? What's this angle? The angle is zero. Okay, or some multiple of two pi. So what we can see is that if I was to have, so minus pi on 6, minus pi on 6 times k is equal to, sort of say, minus 2 pi, for example. And then, you know, those 2s are going to cancel out, and the pi's are going to cancel, sorry, the minus is going to cancel out. So k is equal to 12. One of those ones is strange for three marks. But basically, one mark was, was for converting to polar. One mark was to, um, to doing something like this, and one mark for the answer, all right? So, so I think that what a lot of people didn't realise is that we needed to get this angle, the angle uh, for, for real, you know, for real of Z, 
if z was real over here real then that means the angle was zero okay so a lot of you probably didn't think your way through that one and that was but it was also a very tricky question it wasn't done very well um, by 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 the cohort and especially from people doing this in march you're doing your you know, uh, in november you're doing your exams so there's a long way to go between now and november now this one here i'm going to suggest that this could be done with a cas calculator and a lot of you probably try to do it in all sorts of ways so i'm going to go straight to c solve and i'm going to put this in and i'm going to show you how to do this on the quiz so let's go over here and if i go to i want to go menu three one and i'm going to solve you can be very careful putting this in the calculator z to the power of nine so we're going to press the across button and then we're going to have now, just so we know though, it says here that um, u is equal to root 3 minus i. So we're actually being told that that's a solution. So we need to, to actually, um, this is really frustrating, menu 3, 1, stick, uh, I'm going to check this, I'm going to start typing this I think. C solve like so and what we're going to do is we're going to replace that with root 3 minus root 3 and then we're going to type minus i now if we put in i it's not going to work is it we're going to have to put in this i okay it's different and then we're going to do to the power of 9 and then we're going to press across and then we're going to go plus and then we're going to go 16, and uh, it says 1 plus i. Do not type i because it will not work. You need to use this i. And then we're going to go across, and we're going to do that z cubed. So that's times z, which is once again root 3 minus i. Root 3 minus i. Very easy to mess this up on the calculator. And uh, that's to the power of three, of three. Now I'm gonna just do plus C, plus I, D, because when I solve that, it will do most of the work for you. If I do I, I'm gonna do times D, I'm not gonna do that, and I'm gonna do comma Z. What's going on here? Why didn't that work? Oh, I didn't do it equal to anything, did I? Okay, let's try that. Okay, now, there you go. We've got our answer there, or it looks a bit silly, but what we're going to do is we're going to equate the coefficients. Can you see that I've got a minus C and a minus DI? I want to get that to the other side. It's going to be C plus DI, and on the other side, we're going to have um, is equal to minus 128 minus... 384i. Okay, so when you put it, that's doing all the work for you. I guess that we can sort of say if I want, I would. I'm interested to know menu three one. If I don't think this will work. If I did know, if I wanted to do that in terms of C and D, it's not going to work. But what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, this. Base. So we're going to do pairs, uh, solve. And I'm going to write down what the equation gives us. We've got zero is equal to uh, minus C plus DI. So, so we're going to minus uh, C plus DI. And then we had a minus, was it a minus or a, no, it was a plus. And then it had 128, 1 plus 3I. 128, um, 1 plus 3i, like so. Now, what's it going to have, have is it's going to have the c plus di on this side, get it on that side, is equal to minus 128 uh, minus 384i. So, therefore, the two, two marks was one mark for c is equal to minus 128. And D is equal to minus 384. 
And so there's a mark there, there's a mark there, and sort of basically sort of some method mark there. And the expectation is, the reason why this is incredibly hard and this is the power of nine is because this needs to be done with a CAS calculator. If you're not using a CAS calculator, you're going to be spending way too long on this. Can I just suggest, though, that if we could have done it by hand, but it would have taken an incredible long amount of time. We know that if I had root 3 minus i, that in polar form, root 3 minus i is equal to 2 cis of what? Minus pi on 6, like so. So we would have had to do 2 cis of minus pi on 6, and then that's to the power of 9. Then we would have done now 16. 1 plus i is 16 cis um, of, oh, sorry, that's 16 times, that would be root 2 cis of pi on 4. And then you multiply that by, can you see there, that, that would be incredibly long to do. But you still could have done it that way, but that would have been wasting time in the exam. Whew. Now, that is a fair bit going through that because I tried to take you through each step. But, of course, if you were doing that in real time and once you, I guess, work on this, this exam was really hard. I made it really hard because some of the complex number questions are really, really, really tough in exam two, or at least some parts of them. So don't feel um, as though you're not on the right track. Last year's student in differential calculus, you guys blitzed last year's students as far as the average test mark. You did exactly the same test, I promise you. So what I'm saying is you are on track, but you have got a real big awakening to how tricky some exam questions can be. Not because you can't do them, it's because sometimes it's you need to get used to that style of question, okay, and diff using different methods, using your calculator. So I'm going to stop.